Well, welcome to this course for Basics of Biblical Greek, the fourth edition of the textbook. I'm glad that you're uh, committed enough to learning Greek to, to work through these classes. I'm Bill Mounts. I'm the author of the textbook, and I'll be doing the speaking through this course. This is uh, the lesson for chapter one, and lesson one is, is pretty much an introductory lesson, and I wanted to cover, uh, before I actually get to the content of chapter one, just some of the things that are in the preface of the textbook, kind of help you to get organized and to see, to remember what you're doing and why you are doing it. If there's one word that I could pick to explain uh, BBG, it's that it tries to be approachable. I know a lot of people are scared of Greek, and there's no reason to be scared of Greek. Shakespeare did us no favor by saying it's Greek to me. Uh, its languages can be difficult. Some people find them easy. Some people find them difficult. But Greek's no harder than any other language, and frankly, it's a lot easier than some languages. So what I want you to do at the very beginning of this course is, is to not get uptight, to not be worried, to not be thinking, oh, this is too hard. And the entire way in which I wrote the text was to try to make it approachable. And that, that's the key word. I want you to know you can do this. Don't, don't talk yourself into thinking that you can't. And there's all kinds of pieces of information strewed all the way through the textbook to, to remind you of this. There's a lot of reminders of goals. Why are you doing this? Why are you taking the class? Well, maybe you have a requirement in your uh, school and you have to do it. But I would hope that the main reason you're taking the course is for ministry. Whether you're going to be a pastor or whether you want to be a good Bible student or, you know, whatever be your choices in life, uh, Greek will give you uh, access to information about the New Testament that you just can't get elsewhere. And I want you to remember as you're going through the memory work and the paradigms uh, why you are doing it. And just keep your goals in mind. Another thing I try to do in the textbook is to really reduce memorization. When I learned Greek um, back in the dark ages, uh, we just had paradigms and paradigms. I mean, it's just memory work and memory work and memory work. And I, I remember as a 20-year-old, I was thinking, there's got to be a better way of doing this. And so I've developed all kinds of techniques to reduce the amount of memory uh, work that you'll have to do. So again, if, if rote memory isn't your strength, you know, take heart. Uh, there's not going to be, uh, well, there'll be some of it. Uh, there's not going to be a ton of it. I also am kind of an informal teacher anyway. I want you to get to know me. And uh, I don't know quite how it'll work out in this class. I just kind of let it go as it goes. Um, but I want you to, I want you to know me as a person, as a fellow Christian, uh, as well as your teacher. And so these are all things that I'll be doing to try to uh, help make the content approachable so you don't have to worry about it. Again, keep your goals in mind. In, in the beginning of the textbook, there's a section called the rationale. And, and one of the really big points I'm making is, what are the goals? Keep those in mind. Don't ever forget what's at the end of the road. Another thing that I've done in the textbook uh, is try to be quite innovative, not just to be innovative, to be innovative, but there's some experiments that I tried through the years, and you just need to be aware there's a couple things in BBG that are really different than most other textbooks. Uh, one is that we talk about nouns, and only when we're done talking about nouns do we go on to verbs. The reason I did that is I had a student that failed twice, and I always take that personally. It really bothered me that the student couldn't learn. So on a, a friend's suggestion, I said, well, I'm just going to get you focused on nouns and adjectives and get that part of your grammar all done, and then move on to verbs. And the student got a B, and third time through. But it's, uh, it's kind of a different way to teach the language. But what it it'll does, it allows you to really focus on the noun system and just blow through it. You get to chapter 15 in verbs uh, very, very quickly. So just wanted you to be aware that that is just uh, a, something that's a little different in all of this. And you know, if your teacher wants you to get into verbs earlier, there is a two-track system in BBG. You can do nouns, verbs, nouns, verbs, and that works as, as well. So anyway, just, just to make you aware of some things that are just a little different in the textbook. 
By the way, I refer to basics of biblical Greek as BBG. I've always done that, and it's just my shorthand. So BBG, basics of biblical Greek. There is another resource that I want you to really make use of, and that's my own website. It's billmounts.com. There is so much stuff that I'm putting up on this website to help you learn Greek that I really hope that you take advantage of it. Uh, for example, whenever the textbook refers to a download or some other tools to help you, it'll always be in billmounts.com. Uh, there's workbook uh, helps there, including answer sheets. Please don't cheat yourself. Don't use them instead of learning the language, but there's all kinds of tools to help you with uh, the workbook. There's also an online class, and there's a couple of features that uh, aren't free, but almost everything on the online class is free, uh, especially vocabulary. Uh, I am working really, really hard to help people um, use mnemonic devices and pictures and all kinds of other things uh, to help people, you, memorize the vocabulary. So please make use of the online class on BillMounts.com. There's also a downloadable uh, app for, called Flashworks it's to help drill uh, both Mac and Windows, to help drill uh, vocabulary into your mind. Please use that. And you will see the professor. Now, the professor is a cartoon character that actually my brother came up with. And I'm using the, the professor to try to get Greek teachers to use more senses than just seeing the text. Uh, we know that people learn better the more senses they have, so the more senses they use. So you can see things, you can say things, you can hear things, you can write things. The more, the, if I could figure out how to taste Greek, I would do that as well. But I've got the four senses down, and it's all focused in on the professor. We teach Greek, we tend to teach Greek as a dead language, and it's really unfortunate because then we leave all these other senses behind. So the professor's there to teach you how to count to 10, to how to, to talk to someone politely, ask them what their name is. Um, there's all kinds of somewhat silly stuff uh, that's in the online class attached to the professor, but the whole point is trying to get students to use all their senses to learn the language. I remember when my kids were still really small and they had went to a tutor to start learning Spanish. And they came back after the first day and it was just a flood of Spanish coming out of the mouth. Just, I went, what on earth are they doing right that I'm doing wrong? Well, it turns out my kids are very, very good with languages. But what they were doing is they're saying, the ball is red, the ball is green, the ball is, I mean, they're just saying the same thing and changing the color. But the teacher got them talking and they learned Spanish so fast. And I, that's what the professor is about. So please use your senses. Don't just read it. Say it out loud. Write it. Do everything you can to use all of your brain to learn this marvelous language. And that's what the professor is there about. Now to get to the actual content of chapter one. It's just a real brief history of the Greek language. I thought it was important that you know where biblical Greek fits into the progression of the language. Uh, basically, uh, Greek fits into five basic categories. The earliest is called Mycenaean Greek. It goes way back to the second millennium uh, BC. And then you have classical Greek, which is from the eighth to the fourth century BC. And this is the Greek of Homer to Plato. And then the third period of Greek is Hellenistic Greek. And what happened is that when Alexander the Great conquered the world, part of his mission was to spread the Greek language and the Greek culture. And he spoke a dialect called Attic Greek. And so it was Attic Greek that was spread. But as you speak Greek and you conquer other nations, their languages start affecting your languages. And the language started to simplify quite a bit. Uh, but that's called Hellenistic Greek. It's also, we call it Koine Greek. Koine is just the Greek word for common. And for a long time, scholars weren't sure about the Greek of the New Testament because it was so different from classical Greek. In fact, some people even thought that there was the, the Holy Ghost uh, Greek, uh, that, that the Holy Spirit had created his, his own language to communicate the New Testament. And what we found out through the work of archaeologists was that 
the Greek of the New Testament is the very common, everyday version of Greek. Some of it's higher style, some of it's lower style, but it's, it's basically the Greek that people use to communicate. And there's all kinds of interesting uh, pastoral and theological implications from that. That uh, when the time was just right, God sent his son. Uh, you had the Roman road system, you had the Roman peace, and you had a common language all of which God orchestrated in order to be able to spread the gospel so Paul could go anywhere he wanted to go. But that's the Hellenistic uh, Koine Greek that we're going to be learning. Uh, the next period of Greek is called Byzantium Greek, and this is when the center of Greek culture uh, shifted to Constantinople, uh, Byzantium. And then when it was overrun in the 15th century, uh, you move into basically what is called modern Greek. So that's the basic breakdown of it. Before we go, I just need to have one last pet peeve, okay? I get really tired of hearing people say, well, I, my kids need to learn Latin because Latin's the basis of English. It is not, <laughs> okay? Latin is a Romance language. English is a Germanic language. They're totally different groups. Now there's a lot of borrowing and overlapping. But I mostly get tired of it because why learn Latin if you could learn Greek? Right? So that's it for uh, lesson number one, and welcome to the wonderful new world of Biblical Greek.